السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. وعليكم السلام. Okay guys, I think now you can hear me. So my second question, can you see the screen? Yes. Very well. Let's start immediately, guys. This is week nine. I hope you are fine. Actually, today we will discuss the product and the service design. Actually, this is a very important topic. Okay, let's go ahead to the headlines. New product. You know, guys, having new products in this actually time is considered vital and important because it's not optional thing anymore no it's actually a required thing for all actually successful companies so as they say here without any new products or services we will have a problem okay because without the innovation okay in in the existing products and services this means okay the customers may switch to another company why because other companies may actually offer the new products, the new services. Once I say new product with the better, with the better features, with the better quality, okay? With the better performance, okay? Could be faster, could be lighter, could be actually more reliable. So that's why every time you need to improve your existing products. And not only this, but also you need to add new products, okay? And services. This is the way to satisfy your customers all the time. Okay, maybe your customers now are satisfied with the existing products. Fine. But what about tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and next week and next month, month and next year? No. Customers will change their requirements and will change their taste and preferences. So you need to be ready by offering these products actually that can match their actually, uh, let's say, uh, changing uh, preferences and so on. So yes, it is important to have new product developments. It's very important because this is the way to succeed in the market. So without any new development, products and services can become obsolete. Yes, 100%. And this means customers will not buy from you anymore. They will go and find another product from another company and you lose eventually. So make sure or the companies need to make sure that they have actually what new products or they are employing the innovation policy because this is the way to, to be successful in the market. Otherwise, they will lose. That's why they said here, the NPD helps the organization. How is that? Very simple. By maintaining a gap. Between what? Between your company and your competitors by offering, as I said before, better quality, better performance, okay, and so on. Number two, avoid the competition based on the price. Yes, because if your company actually offering the new product and the new services with enhanced, let's say, quality or enhanced actually features or enhanced, for example, um, yeah, reliability, okay, this means I will buy you, okay? Even if your product price maybe is higher than others, in a way, I will buy your product because I am buying your products not because of the price. No, I am buying your products because of these features, because of this quality, because of that, that actually say durability or actually reliability. So I'm giving customers something more than the price, the quality, the features, the performance, and so on. Number three, this is the right way to be successful in the market. That's the way you need to offer all the time new versions, enhanced versions, better actually products and services. That's the way to be successful. That's the logic way, simply. And then yes, we understand from this slide, it is important to have what new products all the time. Clear guys? Is it clear? Hello. Yes, it's clear. Alhamdulillah. Okay. <clears throat> now we will discuss actually very important uh, actually uh, let's say concept, which is about the actually the types of a new product. Okay. Well, we have three categories. Okay, we have three categories. 
we have the incremental enhancement of existing products, also the new generation products, and three breakthrough products. So again, we have three kinds actually of what new products or new product development. The first one actually is the incremental enhancement of existing products. Well, in this type actually, in this type, okay, there is actually a change. There is a new thing, okay? But that new thing based on the existing products. That's why what you are doing in this type, actually in this type, actually in this type, you you have a product, okay? You have a table, you have a chair, you have a computer, you have a car, you have a, actually a dining table. But what you are going to do now, in this type, in the incremental enhancement of existing products, you will improve that table or that chair or that phone or that, let's say, board or that car. You will improve it in a way. So what you are going to do, you are making some changes, some improvements, okay? small changes, minor modifications in the product that you have. Why? To improve its performance, to improve its actually, let's say, uh, features and so on, okay? That's why it's called incremental, you know? Incremental means what? Small changes, you know? Minor changes, okay? Minor modifications or improvement. That's why it's called incremental enhancement of existing products. So what you have here, you have a product, any kind of product, you have a computer. What you are going to do, you will add some, or you improve some, uh, uh, let's say, you improve some kind of the performance of that car or, or that computer by, for example, using specific, let's say, features or, you know, uh, improved, let's say, devices. They give you example here that existing products can be can uh, given uh, can be given sorry some form of modifications. It's minor, by the way. Why? to improve, okay, or enhance, let's say, its performance, okay, and this could uh, actually could be happened by, for example, redesigning, for example, redesigning uh, that product to, re uh, to reduce, for example, its weight, yeah, and actually reducing the product weight itself, it's some changes, and it's minor, okay, it's not a big deal, okay, so that's the point of increment. OK, so in this type, in the incremental enhancement of existing products, you are not changing the product or the, the idea of the product. It's the same. OK, you just improve it in a way. For example, the phones now, the phones. OK, every time any company, OK, they are offering phones. OK, maybe every six months or one year, they're offering some new versions. OK. Actually, it's the same phone, okay? Just some improvement, maybe in the camera, okay? Maybe you reduce the weight of the phone, okay? Maybe you add some new colors. Maybe you add some, you know, kind of lines in the phone, okay? Or you improve, or you add some, uh, maybe uh, improve some of the applications in the phone, okay? So what you have done here, already you have the product and you just modify it a little bit to perform well, better. That's it. That's why it's incremental. Okay, it's incremental. The second type actually, guys, is the new generation products. And from its name, you understand it's a new product. Okay, so in the new generation products, actually, you may develop a completely new product. Okay, it's called a new generation products. So in this type, actually, in this type, either actually you develop a completely new product and you to a total okay new product a new sofa okay a new concept of the sofas a new concept of uh, a of, of phone okay so you are, you are actually developing a new product it's not only some changes no or minor changes or improvement no it's a new product okay or aha uh -huh, or you have a product, it's the existing product, but the change now, it's not small or minor, no, it's a big change. That's why they said here, a new generation product, it's about a developing, sorry, a develop, de so it's about sorry, developing a completely new product or completely 
So it's a big change. Completely redesign an existing product based on the new technology. And the regular actually example about that is the tips. OK, previously, guys, if you need to listen to any kind of music, OK, you need to have a tape. You know the tape. OK, then people actually start to use this, say, uh, the CDs and then the DVDs. OK, but now there is no need to have the tape or the DVD or the CD. No. Just you can go actually to the website, OK, and just watch it at this. You know, sometimes you, you don't need to download it, OK? Yeah, OK, the downloaded file is there. It's it's you actually used. But sometimes even you don't need to download. Just you can actually watch Sorry, you can listen or you can watch any film you want, OK? Or you can listen to any actually thing just by click. So there is no need to any tape, DVD or CD, OK, or 20 downloads. So the need itself is the same. Nobody changed the need, the need to watch a film, for example, or to listen to music. It's the same need, OK? But how to listen to the music, that's the change here. So I don't need to use the tape now or the, or the CD or the DVD. I don't need. Just go to the website, click, and that's it. I got it. OK, so the change here is big, but it's not in the actual product. It's in the way. It's in the way to satisfy your need. Is it clear, guys, to you? Yes. yes clear. Very well. <laughs> the third type, guys, is the breakthrough product. Aha. Uh -huh. Now in the breakthrough product is a new product. Yes, Dr. Ahmed, you said here it's a new product also. Yeah. The new generation products can be a new product, OK? But the breakthrough product, it's not any kind of new product. It's a big deal new product. It's that new product, OK, that it changed the market. Change the market. Like, for example, the first time you have what? The phone or the smartphone. The I'm saying the first time. The first time you have the mobile phone. It's breakthrough. After the first time, there is some changes. So it becomes now, it becomes what? It becomes incremental, right? Some changes. So again, breakthrough product, okay? It's a new product, but it's not any kind of new. It's actually a unique new product, okay? And that new product change maybe the market or the industry, okay? Like what? Like the first time you have digital camera, the first time you have iPhone, the first time you have the smartphone. Every first time that changed the market, it's called what? Breakthrough product. OK. Is it clear, guys? Thank you, dear. That well, very well. Now, we understand actually from this discussion that new product developments are considered important because this is the way to be to be in the market actually successful or to stay successful and to maintain actually this success also this will actually take us to another thing to take us to another thing which is about the failure rates yes new products are important but this actually does not mean that we will not fail. Yes, sometimes, sometimes some companies, OK, may fail because of the new products, OK? So this means you, we don't need to have a new product. No, I'm not saying that. We need new products. It's a must, OK? But we need to make sure that we have the right plan to have the new products. And we need to be, to, to be ready for the different scenarios. Why? They said, well, Sometimes the new product actually fail. OK, so you may ask why sometimes some of the new products actually may fail. Well, we have some reasons for the failure. OK, we have some reasons for the failure. For example, the product OK is launched too soon. Well, you need to make sure, OK, before you actually launch your product in the market, that it's actually good enough to the customers. 
you need to make sure that there are no problems or technical problems or mistakes or issues, okay? Because if the customer experienced the product and found out that there is some technical issues or problem or mistakes or errors, oh my God, what the reputation you may have now, okay? خلاص, nobody will try it, nobody will buy it from you because imagine the, the, the significance of the impact Okay, or imagine the impact actually of the review of the, of that negative review about your product actually, and others will, will react accordingly. So make sure from beginning, okay, your product is actually what is excellent, is complete. Okay, so don't say I need to uh, make it uh, fast and actually send it to the customer. No, 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 no. Make sure your product is well actually designed and actually uh, don't have any kind of errors okay or mistakes because customers will not accept to buy a, a phone or a car or a computer or a chair with a problem nobody like that okay you can say okay i will replace it it's a problem brother it's a problem replacing the product is <laughs> يعني, something understood you will do it يعني. okay but is it the solution no from beginning, try to avoid such problems. Also, one of the factors, okay, the company cannot support the growth. Again, if you need to have a product, okay, a successful product, you need to have the right resources, okay, to maintain that actually growth. It's, once we talk about resources, we talk about the financial resources, we talk about the human resources, we talk about different kind of production sources. So make sure you have the right resources to maintain that success. Number three, the product does not have sufficient appeal to the market. You know, yeah, generally customers will not buy the product if it's not attractive. So make sure that new, that new product is attractive to customers. Otherwise they will not buy it. They will not think about it initially. So make sure it's attractive. The idea of the new product is attractive to customers so they can attract them and make them buy it. Number four, the customer does not understand the product. It's another problem. Customers simply would not buy something they don't understand. So make sure that the product is easy to be understood and to be used, okay? Because that's the first actually rule. Is it easy to understand and to use the product? That's a question. Generally, customers will not buy something. It's complicated to be used or to, to or to uh, understood to be understood. Number five, there is no market for the product. Sometimes you have a new product and it is new, okay? I mean, it's good, but maybe it's not good in our market. There is no need for it, okay? Customer doesn't want it. So make sure that you are producing or inventing or making that product is wanted. Okay, simply. That's why we said marketing concepts. So you start with the need of customers. Okay, not with the things you can do. Okay, guys. Hello. Yes, it's clear. Is it clear to you? Very well. Yes. Hi. Now we need to discuss the design as a process, and it is actually a process. Designing a new product, it is a process. Why? because there are steps to be followed, simply. According to me here, according to Slack 2011, break the design process into five broad steps. So we have a steps in order to have the new product. First of all, concept generation. Concept generation. So at first, you need to have the idea of the new product. For example, you can say, you know what? I need, for example, to have a new Capsa, mm, for example, a new Capsa. So first thing, we need to, to think together, how can I make a new Capsa? Maybe some of you may say, what about Capsa Cup? Okay, it's a nice idea. What else? Maybe somebody, somebody else may, may say, what about actually uh, Capsa sauce sandwiches? It looks fine, why not? Okay, maybe I like more the Capsa Cup. Okay, so then what we'll do, the concept screening, 
So we will sit together. Maybe we have 10 ideas, okay, uh, about uh, to, uh, how to improve, let's say, the, comes, the capsule recipe, okay, or food. Then maybe I would choose one or two ideas. That's why the concept generation. So may I say, you know what? I will go with the cup actually, or the cup's a cup. Okay. Then I would try to design the idea now to be more tangible. Okay. So I, I, I would check, okay, how, how to be or how can be that idea. Okay. So in order to, in order to what? In order to evaluate. Why? Because, okay, you said the cup of cups. Okay. But can you? Show me how your idea needs to be. Okay, then you talk about how the cup could be, how the cups are, what the things you need to, to actually put it in the cup, and so on, right? Then I will evaluate if the idea is good or not. Who, who will evaluate? Not me, not only me, me and the customers, okay, potential customers. Maybe from this evaluation, I may improve it or add some new things, okay? I may say, okay, the cup is good. We will put some rice some meat and some sauce actually uh, uh, يعني, uh, on the top. Maybe I'm saying, I'm trying to improve, okay? Then um, you can say, okay, what about adding some drink? I don't know. We are trying to improve, eva evalu evaluate and improve. Then if you feel like this is, yeah, this is the right idea, then خلاص, show me now the idea. Show me the cup of caps. Can you show me? In this case, we do what? Prototyping. So we need now to see the cup of capsa, basically, okay? Why? Because we need to check if it's interesting, if it's good, if the customer may like it, don't like it, okay? Want it, don't want it, okay? We need to check more now with the product, the actual product. And from that prototyping, we can maybe cancel the whole uh, concept or improve it, okay, in a way, and start producing simply. So this is actually, guys, the process, okay, of design. Now, as you can see, we have five stages or steps that needs to be uh, studied well, okay? Now, this slide talk actually about disadvantages of the process. What process? The steps of the process. Concept generation, concept screening, actually designing, evaluation, prototyping. So we need now to say or to discuss it's actually disadvantages. Okay. The first thing they said the disadvantage to this type of structured approach of new product actually development. They said first, not all major innovations, okay, come as a result of deliberate research and development activity. This is 100% right. Not all new products comes as a result of this process. What process? Idea generation, screening, designing, evaluation, but I mean, no, no, no. Sometimes the new product comes actually as accident. And I still remember the example about that. The microwave, the microwave, okay, oven. You know, the idea of this device actually was not as a, you know, outcome of this process, no. Well, the idea was very simple. That uh, researcher, okay, or scientist was working on some uh, ra radar, okay, and was testing some microwave, again, micro alone, and the microwave, الموجات القصيرة, okay? And that person has what? A chocolate, actually, bar in his pocket, okay? And he actually uh, observed that his chocolate was melted, okay? Uh, even though the weather is good or cold, then he link, okay, that maybe it's melted because of the micro waves of the radar, okay? Then he understand, well, in this case, he understand the idea of this invention, the microwave. Okay, so this is the example about that. Number two, the screening process might eliminate a very good ideas because of the perceived lack of fit with the corporate requirements. Okay, even though the idea might be very good. You know, in the screening step, step number two, as you can see here, in the screening, you will keep some ideas and you will stop some other ideas. Why you may stop some other ideas? Because maybe this is not your goal, 
or maybe this idea is good, but it's not good for the for this time, okay? Or maybe it costs a little bit more, okay? So this means you may kill or stop some good ideas because it does not fit with your, let's say, corporate requirements or resources, okay, or preferences, okay? And this is a problem. And sometimes, you know, because of some people, okay, because some other, you know, people at the end of the day, they have some agendas and they have some, you know, perspectives. So sometimes they may stop some of the ideas, okay, because of their perspectives, which sometimes might be a little bit limited, okay? Right. Now we have another kind called design thinking, okay? Design, before I complete, uh, any any question, guys? Until now. No, doctor. Continue. Very well. Design thinking, guys, means what? Means the innovation, okay, is powered by the through understanding, through the direct, sorry, through the direct observation. You can say direct, you can say direct, no problem. Direct observation of what people want and need, okay in their lives and what they like or dislike about the way particular products are made, packaged, marketed, sold, and supported. The idea of design thinking is very simple, guys, okay? That you can have, okay, the ideas of new products or services based on your observation, okay, of what? Of the people's, of the people needs, of the people wants, of the people likes or dislikes. Okay, so once you are observe, observing people, how they buy the product, how they are using the product, how they, how they actually consume the product, okay, how they take the product, okay, how they actually, يعني, يعني, uh, they feel about the product, okay. By this observation, you may have ideas, okay, about a new product in order to fix any issues with the existing product. That's why called design thinking. So you will have ideas of new products by the observation of the people who buy or consume, okay, or use the product, simply. Clear? Clear? Clear, Doctor. Very well. Yes, clear. Now, we need to discuss actually the six principles of design thinking. Six principles of design thinking. First of all, reframe ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are to have a new product, okay, you need to know why you need to have that new product, right? Or the idea of you, the new product. So they said here, take a step back to see what assumption you are making and whether you can look at the problem from a different angle. Yeah. For example, you might say, okay, we like the Benadol. Benadol, okay. The idea or the story we start with the Benadol for the headache, right? Then the companies or the, even the company start thinking, okay, people take Benadol, prefer to have Benadol pills because they, they need to feel a little bit what? Comfort, okay, with this sometimes they're with some specific pains. So, so they change the assumption. What about if we have a medication not only for the headache, for the other stuff of things in, in the body? Then they have created actually the different kinds of actually uh, or, or versions of Panadol now. We have different kinds, okay, right? Different kinds now. Something for the flu, something for actually to sleep, something to feel good, you know, different kinds. Why? They have these actually new products because they, they change the assumption or the perspective they are using to have the product. Then they can they come up actually with many or several actually banner types. That's a thing. And part two, understand the user. Every time the right way is to understand what the customer wants. What the customer wants. From studying the customer wants and need, okay, you can understand and you can find actually several ideas of new products. No idea is too wild, okay? Don't kill ideas because you think it's يعني, strange idea. No, study. You need to study every new idea carefully. 
because maybe that new idea could be the future of the the market not only the company the market maybe it's the future of the the market again let's let's get back to the uh, reframe the ideas and no ideas to white like the cars why we are using the cars to move one one place to another place right طيب because we change that perspective So what about flying cars? Now there is a new generation of cars. The what? The flying cars. So for you in this, in the third actually principle, don't say no, 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 no. It's not no. It's not no. It's possible. It's there now. There are already flying cars. Just that improving these cars, making sure it's working. making sure about its durability it's about maintainability about its producibility yes so don't say or don't judge the ideas based on the current situations because the market is dynamic and it's changing collaborate again you can do it alone for sure sometimes you can do the new ideas about new products but let's think together What about if we if we if we, if we sorry if we are a team of people like one person from the the, the the technical actually field one person from the marketing field one person from the operation field we may have ideas okay that can fix all our problems and can help customers in a different way number f- I think five test your ideas okay before you say this is very good or it's not very good. Test it. Ask people. Evaluate again. Evaluate. Study. Because who knows? Maybe a customer will like this idea, and maybe again it's the future of the market. Who knows? Finally, see the big picture. All the time, don't actually evaluate or judge the new ideas according to your specific actually factors. See the bigger picture actually. of the product through understanding the market needs and wants and the requirements and the opportunities that's why you may change your ideas and you may accept specific ideas according to that consideration clear guys all good right yes clear alhamdulillah i hope all the time you are right and fine the design of products and services well as you know we have products and we have services and as you know okay product is actually what tangible okay so and generally customers in in the tangible product they care about what the product can do for them right or the fun the functions actually the product can perform right that's the thing yeah like the car okay we are we, we we are interested to know how the car can take us from one place to another place right uh, how this car can actually make our life actually uh, easier and simpler okay and, and so on so because it, there are some tangible features in the car you can touch it okay and you can actually own it and you can have it and you can use it right now in the service it's the case is a little bit different okay because you know service is something uh, you cannot touch right uh, and according to the uh, characteristics of the services is different it's not tangible okay you cannot own it okay you cannot store it okay uh, and you cannot use it until you actually have the service right So in a sense the service design is much more about the design of the process of what the customer experiences so simply or the main idea in the service actually is what the experience why because as i said it's not tangible so it's experience okay so any service eventually is what considered and uh, considered as important experience and the customers will evaluate that experience positively or negatively based on actually on what happened with him or her right very well like before we actually discuss again the services okay just guys 
okay, let me complete. Now we talk about, we will con continue and complete actually the service design, but let me finish first this actually slide about, well, uh, some other actually guidelines uh, or important guidelines need to be actually considered and addressed, okay? First, once you are designing the products or let's say the tangible goods or tangible products. First, first of all, the aesthetics, the aesthetics, okay? Or the style of the product, okay? It's very important, okay, that the new product uh, looks actually uh, interesting, looks well, okay, or or, or to be um, let's say a stylish product, okay, because generally customers will buy that kind of products actually that can be described as what stylish, modern, nice, interesting, amazing, right? That's the thing. Yeah. And you will buy it because it, you, you like it. You like it's actually design. You like its look, right? Number two, reliability. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I like the design, but it's not the end. What about the performance, right? What about the performance? That's reliability here. So can the product actually perform or can, can work uh, or can actually do what I want, uh, want it to do? Okay, uh, that's a question. Okay, so a product is uh, of little use if it's performed well for a short period of time. And if it's work, if it's if it works actually only for uh, one day or one week, it's not, it's not reliable. Okay, it's not reliable, right? It's important to know maintainability. But can I fix the problem if if it happens? That's a question. It's an important question. Suppose I'm sending you a car, a nice car. Okay, but there is no way to fix it. No, nobody will buy it. So maintainability means that you can fix the product. You can maintain the product. So if there are some issues, okay, to experience in the car, no problem. We will fix the car. We'll make sure that we fix any issue or error or problem in the performance. Number four, durability. Durability. So designers will often have to address how long the product is expected to last for before it's replaced. Durability. So suppose I'm sending you a car, then I told you, you know what? This car only for one week. Then it will fall apart. Oh my God. Nobody will buy it, right? Even if it's for free. Because it's not durable. If I told you this car for can help you for the coming 20 years, okay, why? If I thought this car can help you for the coming one year, nobody will buy it. I'm sure no, no, nobody will buy it. For two years, nobody will buy it. Nobody like that. That's why it, you need to make sure it's maintained. You can maintain it to stay as long as you want. Number, I think, uh, five, producibility. You know, sometimes we have a very good ideas, but unfortunately, we cannot produce it. Or we can produce it, but it will be expensive and nobody will buy it because of its price or cost. So the good thing here it is to is, is what is is to to be able to produce these new ideas, okay, in affordable price according to your market. Any question, guys? Oh, no, doctor. Very well. The last two slides. Still, we talk about the service design. We said before, service is different from the product or the goods because it's, as you know, it's not tangible, okay? So the nature of service is different from the goods, okay? Yes, we may use some of the tangible things, okay, like the environment, but initially, okay, and mainly the service is not tangible. But anyway, we need now to discuss the service design <clears throat> through the service concept, which can actually uh, contain five elements of actually the service concept. So the service in the service concept, we have five elements. Five what? Elements. The first idea or element is the organizing idea. What is the service? Simply, what is the service? What you are offering? Education. So this is the service, the education. Workshops, trainings, financial services, financial actually uh, consultation, medical services. So the organizing idea. So it's about 
actually the, uh, يعني about the service that the customer need to buy. Okay, so the nature of service being bought. What is it simply? Okay. And why we're offering that service? Why we're offering this education? What, what, what the bank is offering, for example, some financial transaction. Why? The reason why. Okay. Number two, the service experience. Again, service is about experience. So it's about what? Steps. It's about steps. If you go to the bank, guys, first of all, you will have that ticket. Okay. Let's say you have a ticket number five. So this means you, you are actually to uh, have a meeting with the service actually person. Okay. After let's say four persons because you are number five, for example. So first of all, you have the ticket. Then you actually sit down in the, for example, in the waiting room, right? Then uh, your number is coming. Then you go to the person. Then you talk to him. You explain your, your problem or concern issues. Okay. Right. Then he's trying to figure out how to fix it. Okay. Suppose he already fixed the problem. Then you actually leave that person. Okay. And go home. So this is the process. There are steps to be followed. So the question here, how do you evaluate these steps? Was it easy? The experience, I mean, okay. How 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 were actually the, the the steps, the different actually steps? What about the waiting time? Was it short? Was it long? Okay. What about the person? Was he helpful or not? Fix his your problem or not? Okay. So it's a question to evaluate the experience, the whole experience with the person who helped you or provide the service to you. Number three, the service outcome. OK, what's the outcome? The customer got what he wants or what she wants. So designer must have a clear understanding of the outcome, what they want, the customer. The outcome the customer is seeking and how this is measured. So you need to, to know, OK, what the customer wants from the bank from the university, from the insurance company, from any place, what he or she wants, and how to make sure we offer him or her what they want, how to measure. Number four, the service operation. Again, you remember I told you that the service is experience, and there are steps. So we need to understand in the service operation how to deliver the service to the customers. And are we able to deliver that service okay, efficiently and every time I say efficiently means you are using the resources in the right manner. And the customers are happy. Finally, is about the value of the service. And we said before, every time you see the word value means it's a difference between the benefits and the cost. And every time the benefits or perceived benefit is greater than the cost, this means you have a value and that's what we want. Because customer will be satisfied if there is a value and will be dissatisfied if there is no right or enough, enough value. So satisfaction, it's about the value. And the loyalty, it's about the value and the satisfaction. That's it, guys, for today's lecture. I hope, actually, all ideas was clear to you. I hope everything is clear and you understand the idea of this chapter about the product design. Anyway, before I complete, let me first close the recording. Then we can complete if you have any question or if we need to discuss, for example, the TMA and so on. I think yes, just a minute.